Right, we're going to sanitise the bench. All good. Always make sure you do this, of course. Why? Get rid of the germs, eh? Good. So we're sanitising is the word we need to use. Sanitising. Okay. Chopping board. So if you're on Maison Plus, what does Maison Plus mean? Everything in this place. Beautiful. What an answer. Thank you. Okay. And secure your board. Done. First thing is onions. Are the onions going in the burger or are they raw for the salad in, bur in the burger? What did the method say? <laughs> Inside the patty? Yeah. With the meat? Alright. Can we not put them in a um, the trouble I have with that, sir, is you are given marks for following the recipe. So during the class, that's what you need to do. And then when you get home, you can do what you want. Alright, so that would be my answer to that question. So if it's going inside the beef, what size and shape does it need to be? Hands up. Boys, what size and shape will it need to be if it's going inside the beef? Pretty small cubes or small dice, brunoise as we call it, which is easy to do, we've done it before haven't we? So the key to that firstly is leaving the root intact, which holds all the uh, onion together when we start to cut. So what I'm going to do, peeling can often be a little bit fiddly, depending on your nails I suppose. All right. Bowl on there so it goes straight in. Okay. Need a sharp knife for this and steady hands. So that would be pretty small dice, yeah. See, that's what we're trying to do. Now the trouble, and you might see it, depending on how fast or slow we are, the trouble is, the acid in the onion will turn the meat black if it's left long enough, all right? It essentially starts to degrade it. So the quality gets less. If you were to mix those onions with the beef, over time it would, it would degrade the beef. And you might see some of that today. So how do you, th how do you think we could avoid that? If we're going to put the onions in the beef, how can we do that and prevent deterioration from the acid of the onion? Yeah, you can work quickly if you like, but there's also, you're still going to get the raw taste in the onion and a little bit of deterioration even if you work quickly. How do you think we can avoid that? What can we do to the onion before adding it into the beef? Pardon? Pre-cook it, yes. All right, good. So if you cook the onion first and then add it to the beef, it will not deteriorate it because the acid has been, it's been cooked through. All right. I don't know if we'll see any blackness today because it should take a while. All right, onions prepared. We're not going to cook them today. What's the next thing? Sliced tomato, okay, we've got a core in there. Don't really want to eat it raw. So we're using a what knife is that? A what knife? Anybody else? Pairing knife. Okay, so looking at signs of quality as well. What do you think about that for quality? Really? Oh, it's got a little bit of stuff on the top, bruising, okay? Just a quality issue. If you're going to serve that to people, you wouldn't use it. So, that's blunt. Alright, so take off the bruising and then using a paring knife, 
just take out the cord because it's pretty hard to eat, isn't it? Okay. So just thinking of little things like that. And we're going to slice this for just going inside the salad in the bun. All right, so does thickness matter when you're doing this? Or do you just cut it any old way? It should be Certainly should be even. Does the thickness matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You've got to think about how, it, how it's going to feel in the mouth. Is it, if it's thicker than the burger patty, is that a sensible idea? No. The tomatoes there, to sort of add a little bit of flavour on top of the meat. Beetroot, it's already sliced. Stick it there. Yeah. What are we doing with the lettuce? Shredding. Shredding. Shredder. Like the teenage Ninja Turtles, isn't it? Shredder. No? Alright. Do we want to eat this? No. White thing here. No. Very bitter. It's there. Well done, sir. It's very bitter. Bitterness is, is okay, and you'll see that there's a little bit of white still going through the lettuce. That will still be bitter. Bitter's a nice flavour as long as it doesn't overtake everything else. And it works well with sweetness in the tomatoes. Right? So shredding is pretty easy. If you've got a sharp knife, it's easy anyway. Done. Right? It's a bit like McDonald's, isn't it? On a Big Mac, eh? Hey? Better than McDonald's, good on you, Connor. He wants it, though, he wants the burger. All right, good, so keep him clean as well. Very important, what's next? Now, if I was doing these um, in a restaurant, for example, I'd probably use a machine to beat them together because it breaks the protein down a little bit. Okay, and it, it stops it being as coarse. All right, but we're not going to do that today. I'm just going to whack it in there. Have we got anything to bind that together? Sorry. Do you know what I mean by bind together? I don't much. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Jeez. Just like magic. All right, so the egg, I prefer to put just the protein in. Which part of the egg is protein? The white one. Put your hands up if you think it's white. Sarah, you've just said white, put your hand up. Anybody else for white? Anyone for yellow then? It's white. Oh. Good on you. Alright, so the white is the protein and that's what's going to bind it together. All right. The fat tends to make it a little bit um, soggy and it's fat. And the fat doesn't really bind it together, it just makes it more rich in flavour. Alright? A bit like adding butter into something, it just makes it richer. Alright? So, herbs. How many herbs? How much? Um, one teaspoon. Teaspoon. Mm. Teaspoon. Mm. teaspoon is a smaller version, isn't it? Is it a small teaspoon? Mm. Alright, so one teaspoon. I can, me I can measure quite well. Please use a teaspoon. Cool. A bit of pepper. Can you season with pepper? Yeah. Pepper's actually a flavouring. <laughs> you can only season with salt, technically. Pepper is an additional flavour. Um, so yeah. Thank you. So we're going to get stuck in with our hands. We're going to add some salt in because we need to season the beef. If we don't season the beef, it really sort of tastes a bit... Dry. Well, it, it, yeah, what is salt doing, guys, here? It's freezing out the flavour. How's it doing that? It's absorbing the moisture. 
Yeah, it's taking out the moisture. Water, if you drink a glass of water, you don't really taste a lot, do you? All right, so if you take out the water from, from the, if you put a load of salt on this, on this tomato and the water comes out, you're left behind with a load of sweet, natural flavor of the tomato. Is that why you put salt on the tomato? It makes it more better. Yes. So really, it's taking out the moisture which doesn't have much taste and flavour and leaving behind the natural flavour of the food, okay? So when we put salt onto meat before cooking, it takes out the moisture from the protein and those sugars then turn brown and give you flavour. If you don't season it, it won't happen, all right? So I'm not saying eat heaps and heaps of this on the dinner table. You need to cook with it though, all right? Don't put this on your meals at the dinner table because that's not sensible. You'll only taste salt. But if you cook with it, it has a process of taking out moisture and sugars and, and everything else. So it is, it is useful. All right, so we're in there. We've salted, we've seasoned. Um, here we go. Bit of protein. Get your hands in. No other way to do it, really. I haven't put all that egg white in there. Okay. I didn't to put too much more in because it's already quite wet. That's fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. If I'd have put the egg yolk in as well, it would have been too steep now. I'm keeping going because I've got to work the egg white throughout the meat. And it will start to get a bit drier when that happens. As soon as it's a bit drier and less wet and soggy, all the onions in the mix. Beautiful. Simple as that. Done. Anything else? Shape the meat mixture into two hamburgers. Shape it into two hamburgers, eh? Or you can make one. Pardon? It will make one. Oh, might be enough for two thin ones, but. Now what happens to that meat when it starts to cook? If the moisture's coming out of it, what's happening? To the size of it. It gets smaller. Alright, so if you, if you start with some, think of that when you think of the size of the bun and the size of the meat before you start, it will shrink. Alright? So, um, if we make two, they're going to be very thin. Yes, sir. Don't know, but it's here, so we'll use it. Do you not like it? No, I like it. Good. All right, so two patties. All right, now that, as you can see, is not sticking to my hand. We can put it on a clean work surface, actually. The reason I'm doing that is, as you can see, the porous board here, it's just sticking to the board. So normally in a restaurant, we'd wear this, so they're exactly the same size. But by eye, you can do that. They're not too bad, actually, for two to be honest. All right, um, I don't think I've got it with me today, but sometimes you can shape the birds. Um, you know small tins of tuna? Mm -hmm. Everyone's saying those. If you, if you take off one lid and the other lid, then you're left with a, a ring. Yeah? That can be useful when trying to shape the burger. Makes it perfectly round, obviously. Um, and then you can play with the height. Don't we have those shaped ones for the scones? Yeah, oh, we do, but they're a bit, yeah, they are a bit small and they've got curly edges as well, haven't they? All right, so we'll get to that in a second. And as you can see, the protein is helping it stick together. It's not cracking, because if it cracks during the cooking, then it's no good. So we'll shape those in a second. Anything else? We're good to go, aren't we? Yeah, 